let's say you're an app developer for the iPhone. And you need to know what all the capabilities are. Have you seen, have you seen what phones can do? It can uh, measure your heartbeat along with your watch. It can count steps. You can uh, measure dimensions of objects, such as the walls and ceiling in your house or the size of furniture or the height of a tree. You can, you can just use your phone and point it. If you have the right app, you got a, you got a compass on there. You can find your direction. You got games. You can play games. You can use different things to control with the games. Um, there's AR. There's augmented reality. You can make it look like a dinosaur is running through your living room. Or when you're shopping for furniture, you can point to your living room and put that furniture in your house where you would put it to see what it would look like there. You can do all that with your phone, but somebody has to develop that, you see? And in order to develop those kinds of applications, the application developers have to know what's in the platform of the phone. And so it's got Wi-Fi capability, cellular capability. It's got, you got to understand different payment modalities and the different standards that are associated, the SOC standard the, associated with those modalities. The screen resolution, what am I dealing with here? The touch screen, the, not to mention the processor and the memory and all this stuff. The fact that it's got a gyroscope and a compass and location services and is AR capable. The, the different cameras that it has. <coughs> How customizable the buttons are, accessibility features, and on and on and on. Cloud service, interact, all this stuff having to do with your phone. The, the app developers need to know all this about the device so that they can develop applications that work on the device and that exploit all the features so that, oh, it's got three cameras. I can use, I can create augmented reality with this since it's got, I think, what, four front-facing cameras actually. There's another one subdued there. So imagine all the app developers uh, just, you know, deciding, look, um, I believe the screen resolution is this. No, I believe it's this. I believe there is a touch screen. I don't believe there's a touch screen. Then they separate over that. You see, believing these things about the platform doesn't get you an application. You can believe these things all day. That's just the starting point. We take those things. We, we start there. We, we take that for granted. It's the starting point. And these are kind of like, that, that's the same thing that these fools are doing over here in Mammon Church. They're acting like the component, the things listed in scripture, like we're supposed to believe different things. You know, the goal isn't to believe things about what's said in scripture any more than the goal is to believe the components of the iPhone so that you can build an app for it. You need to know them. You have to know them. And it's presumed that you believe they're accurate, but that's not the end point. You see, fundamentalists think like knowing these things is the end point. That's not the end. That's not the goal. That's not the desired end state. That's the starting point. The starting point is knowing what the components are. And then from there, you move forward to build the application, the app. From there, you move forward to build the future you that is more like Christ than, you, than the you that's there now. Do you see the difference? Do you see the difference? People treat me like I'm in denial of, of the fundamentals of the faith. You do, but do you believe in the virgin birth and the resurrection? Look, those are the starting point, buddy. That's not the end point. You're not, you're not orthodox and righteous and holy if you affirm those things. You just, you're just looking at the basketball court. You're just looking at the raw device with no software on it. You're just looking at all the ingredients that you could make a cake with. That's not the end point. The problem with fundamentalism is they treat the basic facts 
that are listed in Scripture, like affirming them is the end point, and that constitutes our faith. No. What constitutes our faith is given that information, we move forward with it to build an ark or whatever it is that we are called to do in our life. And you may be called to sacrifice your son or not. You see, you may be called to lead 300 men into battle. You see, just affirming these things isn't the end point. It's the starting point. It's the platform. It's the basis. It's where we get going. Yeah, it's it's like, a, gosh, it's I don't even know what to say. I can't even express how how stupid it is to treat the propositional statements of Scripture like affirming them is the goal of Christianity and that's what makes a good Christian. No. No. Given that landscape, given that arena of the virgin birth and the resurrection and the deity of Christ, given that, see those are the boundaries of the, of the basketball court. Now let's play the game. Now let's win the championship. You see? You see the difference? Like, yeah, look at a basketball court. What if you were to ask, you know, Kevin Durant or Michael Jordan or somebody, Larry Bird, do you believe that the, that the free throw line, the foul shot line is 19 feet away from the out of bounds line on the opponent's court end? Do you believe that? Because if you don't believe that, you're not an orthodox basketball player. No, it's no. And that's what fundamentalism is like. It's like you're allowed to be on the basketball club if you have the right beliefs about the court, the right beliefs about the size of the ball and the, the pounds per square inch to which it's supposed to be inflated. No, you need to be able to dribble the thing. You need to be able to dribble, pass, and shoot. You need to be able to score more points than the other team. You need to work on – there's, there's things you need to do. That's just the arena. So the things, the things that are in the Bible is just laying out the arena for you. That's not the end state of Christianity. That's not how you define whether or not you're a good Christian. You know, asking somebody if they believe the three-point line is so many, you know, 15.9 feet away from where the goal is at a certain point or uh, 22.1 feet away from where the goal is, asking somebody if they believe that is not how you hold someone's feet to the fire on whether or not they can win a basketball championship. As a matter of fact, you could probably win a basketball championship. I, I, I've won a lot of games without these specifications in mind at all. At all. I had no idea. I had no idea it was 22.14 feet from the... From the basket to the, had no idea, no idea at all. You can actually play the game well without without knowing some of the things. If you get the flow of it, you understand it. You see the line on the court. I don't need to know the specification necessarily. Uh, so what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do is tell you that, and the the kind of thing this this fundamentalist orthodoxy kind of nonsense baby Christianity the profane idolatrous mammon church thing thinking you're going to hold somebody's feet to the fire they're departing from the faith because they don't believe the things no we we just take the things to be the starting point not the end point and the problem with fundamentalism is they treat all the things that you're supposed to believe like the end point they're not the end point it's, it's not the uh, so if we go back to these slides where we look at this the goal of evangelicals and fundamentalists is to persuade as many people as possible to affirm what they to affirm what they consider to be the correct teachings of the Bible, and that's like that would be like Gordon Ramsay getting everybody together and getting them to affirm that these really are three eggs and that this is, you know, so many cups of flour and this is the baking soda and this is the sugar and that is the milk and that's the oil and that's the butter, that's. And, and, and then when everybody in there agreed that that really was the flour and those really were the eggs, that's the success. 
And guess what? There aren't any cakes. And that's the state of modern fundamentalism right now. Everyone is all concerned about agreeing about the eggs and the flour and the milk and the butter, but nobody's baking any cakes, you see? Nobody's going out there to build an ark. Nobody's going out there to lead anybody in battle like Gideon. Nobody's walking with God like Enoch. You know, just picking out of Hebrews 11 here. Nobody's doing it. 